Excellent! Well, what's up guys and welcome to this sort of quick impromptu in-between video about my wife's build hotbox uh, Which I completed actually a couple months ago. It's up and running. She's been using it to play well mostly overwatch But also some doom and it's pretty much good to go Although uh, if you guys watched my previous video series on that you might be aware that I just wasn't necessarily 100% happy with how it turned out uh, so I have been procuring other parts to uh, basically integrate into that system. I have collected pretty much everything I need to move on with the build to a phase two of this project. Uh, for that, I've decided to first upgrade the CPU since I am water cooling the system and it's a pretty high end water cooled system. The 6600K, you know, it's a nice unlocked overclockable CPU, but uh, the 6700K is kind of the this is what I would get if I was building a new water cooled system on this platform, and so that's what I'm going to be dropping in there. Uh, new motherboard, of course, that's what this video is going to be mostly about, is modifying this motherboard to make it match aesthetically with the rest of the parts of the build, since finding a mini ITX uh, motherboard on Z170 that has a good color scheme is actually pretty difficult. Um, a bit of a challenge. Anyway. But other than the uh, CPU and the motherboard, uh, I'm gonna be doing some painting today, so some of that there. Uh, I've got a replacement 8-pin uh, CPU power connector from Insourced Customs. Uh, Joey actually sent this over to me free of charge, so big thanks to Joey. He does a really good job over there, and um, I needed an 8-pin because previous motherboard only required a 4-pin, and uh, we want overclock, so more power. There's a big pile of fittings over here. This is from the uh, supplementary stuff that EK has sent over. Um, I mainly needed some additional fittings, so I got some rotary fittings here. These are really nice because you can twist them to be 90 degree or sort of in between 90 and 45. Uh, these are great for just getting stuff lined up properly or doing a little offset or something like that. I have a pass-through right here. So this is what I'm going to possibly punch a hole through the bottom of the case to do just a, a, a drain out the bottom. So I might use this for that. Or else have a fill port right here, which is effectively the same thing, but you know it's a little bit larger, maybe a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'll probably test both of those and see which one works better, and use whichever one seems to work better. Uh, finally, got some like 90 degree fittings and that kind of thing. Uh, we got to make sure that I have everything needed, so that's why I had this whole pile because if I was missing something, I didn't want to have to wait for it to ship all the way from EK over in Europe. So, uh, all right, for coolants, we do have some upgrade or some change. This is the pastel orange concentrate coolant from Mayhem's. Uh, I tried a couple different coolants from Bits Power and Mayhem's before, but it was the uh, not opaque, the, the, the clear types of coolants, or at least the coolant dye. Um, this is pastel, so it's much more dense and you can't see through it. Um, Jay has had weird random issues with this stuff, so we'll see how it works for me. But uh, I also got two of them because it's overkill and too much. Lastly, uh, more tubing. 12 millimeter inner diameter, 60 millimeter outer diameter. This is what I was kind of running out of when I was doing the original build and I was getting my bends down and I found this uh, type of tubing to be a bit more challenging. I got a lot of this though this time so I can redo any builds that I need to redo and make sure I have plenty left over so I don't start to get worried about running out like I did with the original build. Back to the subject of today's video though and I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing of this while I talk. This is the Z170i Pro Gaming Motherboard made by Asus. Z170 board, and the reason I'm swapping to this motherboard is for overclocking purposes because the Gigabyte, the Gigabyte Z170 and Wi-Fi um, was was able to overclock, but basically I was only able to get about four point. I actually had 4.6 gigahertz stable for a little bit, and then uh, that ended up having some issues, so I decided to upgrade the motherboard to something that could possibly do a little bit better with overclocking. If you look at Z170 motherboards that are available right now though, and uh, you sort them by mini ITX options, and you look at what's out there, you'll find that the one I chose from Gigabyte originally, the Z170 and Wi-Fi, is pretty much the only kind of mostly pretty much color neutral board that's out there. Uh, this one is, I think, kind of a close second, uh, and this one does have some benefits such as better power delivery, so you got an 8-pin connector there instead of a 4-pin. You also have some decent size heat sinks here over the power delivery elements for the CPU. So that's going to hopefully help us maintain a better overclock. I knew already that my 6600K that I used in uh, Hotbox could hit uh, 4.7 gigahertz. I did, I did that on a Maximus 8 formula motherboard, but on the uh, Z170 and Wi-Fi, it was really topping out at well, 4.6 originally, and then we had a bit of instability there, so I've actually rolled it back to 4.5. Uh, this motherboard, I think, should be able to hold, well, I'm actually not sure what we're going to be able to get since I have a new uh, 6700K here. Got a little squished in the box, but um, we'll see how that overclocks, and uh, hopefully it'll do a little bit better. So, 
Back to the dilemma. Uh, for anyone who's trying to build a mini ITX system, who's really looking for a color coordinated board, uh, if you don't want black and red, then your options are really limited. So this board, fortunately, is pretty much all black with a little bit of sort of gray. There's of course some silver accents on some of the pieces that are going on in there. We only have uh, three, maybe four elements of red. We have the Pro Gaming right here with the ASUS logo on it. That's a bit of red there. And then we have the heat sinks up top that have some red accents over here and over here. Uh, we have one last little bit, which is the cable here for the, uh, this is the battery, right? Yeah, this is a battery. Yeah, that's, a, that's the motherboard battery. Um, and I might pull that off and just paint it or something like that just to get rid of all of the color on the board. Other than that though, it has the other features that I was looking for, uh, which is an M.2 on the board right there in the back, which is, I need that because that's one of the main drives in the system. Uh, and then I also was hoping to get Wi-Fi and this one does also have Wi-Fi in there too. So nice to have all the features and in a color scheme that hopefully I can modify to be color neutral. The way I'm gonna do that is by removing the heat sinks to spray paint them essentially. Now there's two different types of mounting methods for the heat sinks here you might also notice. This lower one here just has these little plastic prongs. They pop through, so I'm gonna just, just use some pliers to squeeze those and pop those back out. They're kind of annoying to remove, but they can uh, with a little bit, with by being careful and a little delicate, you can get those off and it's, it's not too much of an issue. The other heat sinks on the board, fortunately, are held on by these screws right here. So we got standard Phillips head screws, so those should come off very easily. And uh, they do have a bit of thermal pad underneath them that I can see along here at the edge. So I'm gonna to need to be careful to maintain that. But I'm just gonna remove those and then we'll be doing some spray painting. Now when it comes to spray painting or modifying something like this, you have a few options. Of course, Plasti Dip has been championed by a lot of people because it is not conductive. However, Plasti Dip is difficult to use anywhere that might get extremely uh, hot, places that warm up, it can melt. So I'm gonna go and uh, skip the Plasti Dip option. This is just some more general purpose spray adhesive. Oh wait, no, no this, that's not even paint. That's spray adhesive, that shouldn't even be there. Why is that there? What I'm gonna be using is a self etching primer right here. This is heavy duty stuff. It's made for auto bodies, uh, steel and aluminum. I'm using some heavy protection when I actually use this, which includes, uh, I'm gonna be spray painting it outside. I'm gonna be using, you know, the, the, the air filter thing, gas mask on my face. Make sure I don't inhale too much of this. And this is gonna make sure that it uh, etches into the grooves, first of all, which is very nice. And also I've used this spray paint before, so I know it has a nice flat black finish and hopefully everything should turn out nice and pretty. One last thing to point out before embarking on an endeavor such as this is I just bought this motherboard. This wasn't provided by Asus. I bought this directly uh, from Amazon. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do before I do any modifications, make sure the dang thing works. So I'm gonna install my 40, uh, or my, my 6700K and some memory and just plug it in, and make sure it's up and running. And uh, if that is all good, then I'll move on to some modification of my heat sinks. All right, the tabletop build is done and uh, looks like we have power. So let me just short a couple pins here if I can figure out where the heck they are. Uh, oh, I found them. Power button. Okay, cool, that's good enough for me. Uh, there are definitely more tests we can do and whatnot, but usually if you get into the BIOS, it means most of the major issues that you might discover out of the box are not going to be issues. So I am confident enough to proceed with the modifications to the uh, heat sinks and the voiding of my warranty. I'm pretty sure I can just heat gun this top layer off here, and if I do that, and the underneath is still finished, you know, kind of like the edges here, I might just leave it as is and just leave that off. If not, I'll have to figure out a way to color this or paint it. This is the adhesive on the chipset heatsink, which is pretty thick, but I'm actually just sort of pushing it with my thumb. A little bit at a time, and it's coming off.
Okay, it's next morning now, and uh, here's a look at the chipset heatsink finished, cleaned. Um, I was actually considering like spray painting over this or something, but I I'm, think I'm totally fine with the finish. You know, it's mostly clean. There are a few scuff marks where I was gripping it with the uh, pliers and whatnot. I could have been a little bit, a little bit more careful with that, but it looks just fine. And with the little retention pieces in place. The uh, rough spots along the edges, really, you can't see very much, so I'll be okay with that. So happy with how that turned out. Also, of course, the heat sinks themselves, which turned out pretty nicely. I didn't get these from all angles because the black was uh, blending in pretty nicely. I mainly needed to get the top to get rid of that red accent, and I think I did. There it is. One of them, at least. The other one is here. And these are all dry and. It turned out very nice, very clean. I did have to tape off all these pads back here to make sure none of those got anything on them, but uh, now it's time. And there it is guys, the finished product for the mods, at least the ones that I did last night and kind of finished off this morning. Uh, primarily removing this stupid pro gaming ASUS logo from the chipset. It's so much better without it. Why, why even make this thing and put it, this costs money to put that on there and it's, it's stupid. Uh, anyway, also of course the painting of these two heat sinks also came out very nice. And finally just a very slight modification with some uh, Plasti Dip on the little uh, battery uh, cable right there to get that all black as well. So everything is just matching super nicely now. This is gonna be very clean and it will blend in with my orange and black and gray build that uh, of course I'm going to be redoing for my wife, Hotbox version two. Uh, I'm pretty excited. So anyway guys, I know it's going to be probably another week and a half until I can move on to the next step of this project, but it is nice to know that with a bit of modification, you can get a Z170 board that is, uh, looks pretty cool, can overclock, has uh, all the good features that you'd want, and it also, well, it's got a voided warranty, I guess that's the, the, the downside to it. The only other thing I need to double check is to make sure I can disable these LEDs down here. Pretty sure I should be able to do that, but I'm not positive. So. Wish me luck on that one. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, hit that thumbs up button once again. Let me know if you enjoyed it and we'll see you all next time.